So here we are now talking about the next big sort of phase, and that has to do with aqueous phase solution chemistry. So the first thing we have to do is pretty much talk about nothing but vocabulary. That's what this next little bit is, just mostly vocabulary. So, because we need to be crystal clear as to what all these sort of words mean, because we're going to throw them around a lot. So when we talk about solution phase chemistry, we have to be very clear as to what a solution is. A solution is technically any homogeneous mixture that is and is composed of it can be composed of many things, but at a minimum is composed of a solute and a solvent. The solute is the thing that is being dissolved, and you can have more than one solute. And the solvent is what the solute is being dissolved into. Now, for the purposes of these calculations or this next couple of sections we are talking about aqueous phase reactions and that aqueous that little aq which is going to go into subscript behind things means that the solvent is water so when we say an aqueous solution what we're really saying is oh something where the solvent is water now again you can have more than one solute so for example i think of kool-aid kool-aid is a great example of a solution Kool-Aid has lots of things dissolved in it. It's got flavor, it's got color, it's got sugar, it's got a bunch of other stuff, but there's only one solvent and that solvent is the water. Now, there's a subclass of solutes that when you put them into solution, they actually dissociate and form aqueous phase ions. And we call those things electrolytes. The reason we call them electrolytes is because when you put them into water and they form ions, those solutions actually conduct electricity. So electrolytes sort of come in three different flavors, or three different groupings, if you will. There is the strong electrolyte, which means it completely dissociates. So no matter how much you put in, it all falls apart. So for example, sodium fluoride is a strong electrolyte. Sodium sulfate is a strong electrolyte. Magnesium chloride is a strong electrolyte. They completely dissolve in ions. They dissolve and they dissociate. They both dissolve and dissociate. Now dissolve just means that, you know, the individual molecules sort of like fall apart in the solution and get bathed in water molecules. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. What you need to understand is that dissociate means for, for, forms ions. That's what dissociation means. It forms ions. So when we talk about electrolytes, we're talking about the dissociation. We're not talking about the dissolving. We're talking about the dissociation when we talk about strong electrolytes. One way of thinking about these is that the strong electrolytes represent the soon-to-be divorced couple that goes to the party. So say there's a party, and it's you know it's all couples. No nobody comes singles. No stag. And so you've got these married couples, and all, they're all married couples. So this, the soon-to-be-divorced, so say you got the, a couple that shows up, they've been married for a while, and they've been bickering, and you know, they've they sort of filed the paperwork, but they don't tell anybody. So they got to go to the party, and they have to go with their soon-to-be-divorced spouse, and they're not going to enjoy it. And as soon as they get to the party, what happens? They're at the party, and everybody's sort of walking around and milling about, and those two completely separate as fast as possible, because they don't want to hang out next to each other during the party. So they go and they interact, and the party, in this case, is the solvent. All right? So they go to the party, and then they get sort of mixed around. Okay, and they're, they're mixed around with all the other things and they're separated by stuff. Then we have the weak electrolytes. Now the weak electrolytes are species, compounds, that have a low concentration of ions and they're only slightly soluble, meaning they only partially dissociate. So we can think of them, going back to our marriage analogy, or party analogy, where a married couple show up, that this is the couple that's been married for like seven years. You know, they'll kind of come and go, you know, and they might you know, they might separate and go talk with friends, and then later on they'll kind of come back and sort of talk a little bit and kind of come back, and, you know, they're sort of, you know, here and there, and sometimes they're kind of sometimes not. And then we have the non-electrolytes. The non-electrolytes are, they dissolve in water, they'll go to the party, but they stay together. They do not dissociate at all, and so they're still sort of attached, if you will. Okay? So, sodium fluoride completely dissociates into sodium ion and fluoride ion. This compound is called sodium sulfate. It completely dissociates into sodium ion and sulfate ion. That's why it's actually called sodium sulfate. So an example of a non-electrolyte might be like sugar. right? So sugar, you dissolve it in water. It dissolves, meaning that the individual sugar molecules are separated. And then 
but it doesn't dissociate. It doesn't actually fall apart into ions. So sugar water does not conduct electricity, whereas sodium fluoride or sodium chloride does because it forms those ions. The key to conducting electricity is, does it actually fall apart and form ions? So non-electrolytes, no ions exist. It still dissolves, but no ions exist. Now, most molecular compounds are weak or non-electrolytes. Now, remember what a molecular compound is. That's the species that are both elements are to the right of the stair step on the periodic table. So like um, nitrogen dioxide or carbon dioxide or carbon disulfide. You know, if you have two nonmetals, we call those molecular compounds. And molecular compounds generally do not dissolve in water or dissociate in water at all. But we're, so what we're going to spend almost, most of our time talking about here in the next couple of sections is on ionic compounds ionic compounds, which generally, a lot of them, most of them, dissociate to form ions in solution, which is why we call them ionic compounds. All right, so let's just tighten up the, the, this difference between dissolve and dissociate and get against again, some more semantics. So if I take sodium chloride solid and I put it in water, it becomes sodium chloride aqueous. It dissolves in sodium chloride aqueous. And I want you to notice this is an equal sign. This is not an arrow. This is not a reaction. This is an equal sign. Meaning, when we write this, this sodium chloride, it is a strong electrolyte, which means it dissociates into ions. Completely dissociates into ions. So I get this Na plus one ion, this chloride minus one ion. That's what sodium chloride aqueous means. Meaning when I write this, this is what the actual truth is. This is what I write, this is the truth. Now you might ask, well, why don't I just write the truth every time? Well, if you'll notice, this takes a lot to write out because you have to write Na plus one sub AQ and a plus and chloride and a minus one and AQ. And that's just a lot. So, because you are going to learn the rules for what is a strong electrolyte and what isn't, you'll just know, trust me, that sodium chloride is a strong electrolyte, meaning it completely dissociates. So, all I want you to be, the take home message here is if we write this NaCl sub AQ, that's a Q, I know you can't really see it, blame Microsoft. That means it is actually one Na plus and one Cl minus aqueous. Because sodium chloride completely dissolves and dissociates. So this is sort of our shorthand notation for this. Now, what about ethanol? This is ethanol, which also dissolves in water. You know because you know that beer exists and whiskey exists, and that's just ethanol dissolved in water. They don't separate like oil and water. But ethanol does not dissociate. It becomes aqueous. It does dissolve and forms a nice homogeneous mixture in water, but this is it. It stops. It does not fall apart into anything. Ethanol in water, dissolved in water, does not form aqueous ions, so it does not dissociate. It is a non-electrolyte. Ethanol is a non-electrolyte. Notice how this is a molecular compound. It's just got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, so it's a molecular compound. It doesn't dissociate in water, but it does dissolve in water. So again, ethanol dissolves only, it doesn't dissociate. Even though we'll write NaCl sub AQ and methanol AQ, one of these actually dissociates and falls in the one, and the other one doesn't. Again, how are we going to know that? You're going to learn the rules for what dissociates, and you're going to learn them relatively soon.